Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're going to be talking about how to choose a palette. Now, what is a palette and what is it for? And it's mainly for holding, mixing, and arranging your colors for your painting. And these come in all shapes, sizes, and different people will use them differently based on how they paint. Now, for example, a palette shape like this one right here is best for holding. So it works really good to like lay on your arm and hold it as you paint. Um, but something that's more square or rectangle might work better to sit on a table next to you as you're working. The best practice when using a palette and mixing colors is to use a palette knife to mix them here on your palette. If you're using a paintbrush, the paint's going to get in the metal part of this and over time all of these bristles will stand out instead of together at a nice point. So over time you will ruin your paintbrush. But with a palette knife you can mix your colors, you can kind of scoop them and move them around with it here on the palette, and then you can just wipe this clean and you're good to go. It's going to last you a lot longer than if you were using your paintbrushes. As for organization, everyone works a little bit differently. Um, some people like to have rainbow order so they know exactly where all of their colors go. Some people will have dark to light or light to dark. Um, personally, I like to work based on where I am in the painting. If I'm starting with my sky with my blues and my whites, I'd have those here. And then I would work on the ground so I would have all of my greens and yellows. And then I would be working on tree trunks so I would have all of my browns. Um, and some people kind of don't do any organization at all, but they know where their colors are. They're just kind of filling in space as they work. And that's totally acceptable too. Just a quick note on how to hold the palette shape palettes. Um, you're going to be holding it in your opposite hand from the one you're working with. I'm right-handed, so I'll be holding it in my left hand. And some people will hold them like this, but over time the weight of this with your mixing of your colors and all the paint is going to be very painful for your wrist. So the way you want to hold it is you want to set it on your arm just to kind of give it that support here. And that hole is meant for your thumb to hold it like this. Um, and if this isn't comfortable, you can kind of like play around with flipping it, seeing whichever way works this way, um, but definitely rest it on your arm so you don't have that weight on your wrist. I'm gonna group these by price and ability level. It's a huge factor in deciding which palette's gonna work best for you, basically how much you wanna spend and how long you have painted or intend to paint. This first group I'm calling basic. These are really good for people who are just starting out, who are not sure if they want to keep doing painting. Um, there's not a whole lot of money invested in them, but they will work for doing a couple paintings until you decide if this is what you want to do. They're also something you can grab quickly so you can just start painting right away. Now, the first one in the basic category is plastic lids. Now you can just save these from sour cream containers, yogurt, anything like that. This one came from a sour cream container. And these are good because they're easy to get. Um, you probably have them around the house or you will soon. Um, and they have a nice lip on it so the paint won't really spill off. Um, the problem is, is they're really flexible. So if you're using your palette knife on it, it's gonna be harder to mix your paint with that. Plus all of these little indentations here make that harder. It also makes it harder to clean. Um, the best way to clean it is to let the paint dry and then kind of just scratch the paint off and eventually you will get all the paint off. Um, it's just not going to be easy or perfect when you're done. I find these are best for obviously smaller paintings because they are so tiny, um, but also to hold small amounts of like one color. Normally I'm using a big heavy palette and if I'm just doing a little bit on the painting and I just need yellow, I can just put a little bit of yellow on this and hold this a lot easier than my big heavy palette. So sometimes I do use these even though I've been painting for a while, so it's good to always have some of these around. The next part of the category is plates um, and there's kind of some variations in this and the first one is a styrofoam plate or a bowl as I have here um, which is nice because you can get these you can have a ton of them if you can't clean one and you just want to have a clean one it's easier to grab a new one out of the package and if you decide you don't like them then you always have them for guests if you're having a party um, but you can see they're pretty fragile if I'm using my palette knife on this I'm going to gouge a hole in it and that's going to be harder to use but it's good because it doesn't leak color through it. It's kind of waterproof, so it'll hold the paint and it won't seep through and get on the table or anywhere else. Um, so you do have those. There's also kind of these waxy coated paper ones. Over time, I feel like these do break down because they don't hold paint very long and they'll just kind of fall apart eventually, but they're easier to use a knife on because they're not gonna poke a hole through it. So they're good temporary, but they're not good long-term. 
So these are kind of the disposable plates, and these are the not disposable plates. So this is a plastic plate I just pulled out of my pantry. Um, it's a lot better for mixing color on than like the foam one because it's so durable. Um, it's a little hard to wash because it is plastic and it's harder to scrape on that. You'll just kind of gouge the plastic if you're scraping too hard. But I think it does work a little bit better than these just because it is so durable. The next group is advanced. They're pretty cheap options for people who have painted a little bit and want to upgrade from maybe something they were using before. Um, these are like meant to be used by painters. And they're good if you aren't ready to spend a lot of money, but you want to at least get like a real palette. This is kind of the category for that. The first one in this category is palette paper. And these come in like a little book and they're all bound together. I would use it just like this. Put your paint on the top, when you're done and when you can't clean it, just rip off the piece, throw it away, use the next piece underneath. You want the stability of the entire book so this isn't like flopping around like you're painting on a piece of paper. It's going to be a lot easier to mix your colors if you keep the entire book together. Now these are pretty cheap. I think this was about five dollars from where I got it. Um, you can replace these pretty easy but you will go through a lot because it's harder to wash this so you have to kind of throw it away and use a new one. And these do come in quite a variety of sizes. You can even get these in like the palette shape with the thumb hole and you can also get these in a neutral gray which is really good because if you're using white sometimes the light will bounce off the palette and kind of change how you see the color on your palette. So if you're mixing like a color and you want it to be the most perfect green that you can mix you probably want to kind of get a neutral gray palette because that'll help you see it how it should look and how it's going to look on your painting versus the palette because of the white background it's just going to change how you see it. The next one in this category is plastic and I have two plastic ones here um, and they're very different from each other. This one is flat and it's a palette shape. This one is rectangle and has walls so you could kind of wrap it up with plastic wrap if you want. Um, but plastic comes in every shape, it comes in every size, you can get it in neutral gray. You can even get plastic ones like this with a palette shape that have these indentation, these wells in it to help you kind of hold the paint a little bit better. Um, so plastic has the biggest variety, it's very durable because it's plastic, and it's going to last you a while, but it is a little bit harder to clean than some of the more professional palettes. The last one in the advanced category is metal, and these come in two types, a plain metal like this, but also they have them um, enameled, so they kind of have this enameling over the top. These ones um, are hard to clean in my opinion, just like the plastic, you have to really scrape the paint off. The enameled ones are a little bit easier because they're more of a smooth texture, but both are going to be very durable. The last group is professional. These are for people who paint a lot and want a palette that's going to last them a long time and are ready to invest a little bit more money in something like this. Now the first one in this group is a Stay Wet palette. Um, there's a specific company that makes these and I had shown just the box part for the plastic part um, because it worked for that. But this comes with a sponge. Um, so it has this sponge in it and there's directions that come with it so make sure you read through those first. But the idea is, is the sponge goes down in here, you've soaked it in water, it has a special paper that you've also soaked in water, um, and then you just put them here in the palette. And then you can do all of your regular painting stuff here, mixing your colors, holding your paints, and the water in the sponge and the water on the paper is going to keep those paints moist so they won't dry out, which is a huge deal with acrylic because paint dries so fast. If you want your paint to be good the next day, you need to cover it up with plastic wrap or get something like this. Um, this also has a lid, which is not waterproof or watertight, but um, it will kind of keep the area inside the box from drying out too much. This Stay Wet palette comes in different sizes. This is the smallest one. You can also get it with little wells, like those watercolorist wells across the top, just to hold different colors as you're working. Um, it comes with five sheets total of this paper, and they said that this is actually washable. You can wipe it down, you can wash it and reuse it, but you can buy extra paper online. You can replace the sponge online if it gets gross. Um, and I have heard that these get mildewy or moldy, um, and I suggest using distilled water only when you're soaking them because that has less of the impurities from the tap that cause mold and mildew to grow. They also suggest using a diluted hydrogen peroxide to kind of spritz this down because that'll help prevent that too. Um, so these are kind of nice for that option if you're finding your paints dry super fast, especially if you're in a dry climate like the desert out in Arizona, this would be something that would be really useful for you. 
The last one in this category is glass. Now this is the neutral gray glass palette. Um, these come in different sizes. I don't really think they come in different shapes other than rectangle. Um, they come in clear and also white, but this is the neutral gray one. Now these are very durable. I know it's glass. It's a tempered glass, so if it does break, it'll break into pebbles and not shards. Um, I've been very careful with mine. I've never had one break. Obviously because it is glass, it can break, but as long as you're careful and you're not you know, dropping it or hitting it on the side, it will last you a long time. The problem is, even though it's easy to clean, you do need a special tool to clean it. You need a scraper tool with a razor blade to scrape all of the paint off. Personally, I prefer a glass palette, and this is actually the palette for my Beyond the Sea painting that I finished about a week ago now, or a week and a half ago. Um, and how I paint is I put all of my colors down on my palette. So this is all the colors that I used for the sky and for the sea in that painting. So I have some white, I have some black, I have some ultramarine blue, some cyan, um, kind of a mix of a light bluish color that I made, and then I have a violet that I made from cyan and magenta. After I have all my colors on my palette, I cover them in this plastic wrap. This is actually the plastic wrap that my canvas has come in before I get them. So I unwrap the canvas, I cut them down into small pieces, and then I use it to cover up my paints on my palette. Now, this was about a week and a half ago I finished this painting, and these paints are still wet. If I uncover this, I can still paint with that paint underneath. So it's done a pretty good job of keeping them moist and not drying out on me. The edges get a little hard, but the centers are still pretty good. Um, so as I'm painting, I'll just uncover the color I need, paint with it, and then I'll just seal it back up when I'm done. That way I still have this blue if I need it somewhere else or later on in the painting. Now, this is my other palette from Beyond the Sea. This was for the lighthouse, um, the door, and like the orb on top of the figure at the top of the lighthouse. And in order to clean this, um, I've let it dry completely so none of these are wet, and I'm going to start by spritzing it with water and letting it soak for like 10 minutes. Now, what this does is it kind of helps the knife glide on the glass so I don't scratch it. Um, and it also helps separate the paint from the palette a little bit. It's not gonna totally get it off, but it's gonna help me when I'm using the razor blade. Once this has soaked for like 10 minutes or so, it's still wet, the water hasn't evaporated, you're gonna use your scraper tool and kind of push away the paint. Now you wanna do this at a 45 degree angle without kind of pushing the corners into it because that will scratch the glass. It doesn't ruin your ability to use it or um, to clean it, it just makes it weaker over time, more likely to break. Um, this one I've had for quite a few years already and I have some scratches in it, but I've been very careful with it and it still hasn't broken. So it is pretty durable and you're just gonna kind of scrape away the paint like this. And it comes pretty clean, sometimes you have to go over an area once or twice. If you're finding it's not moving, um, add some more water, let it soak a little bit longer. But you wanna push away from you probably do this on a table or somewhere a bit more sturdy than in the air, but the paint should come up pretty easy. And then you can just toss all of this dried paint away and um, wipe the palette down to get any of the extra water off and you're good to go. The other thing you should do is you should always clean off and dry this blade. It will get rusty and then you'll have to get a new one. And if you're finding it's not cutting so well and you've been using it for a long time, it's probably time to replace this with another straight edge razor blade. And there we go, we have a nice clean palette ready to use for my next painting. As you can see, there's pros and cons for all of these palettes. Um, consider the factors that go into how you're painting, what your price point is. Um, if you're standing, maybe you want one with a thumb hole. If you're somewhere where it's drier, you may want the Stay Wet palette. So think about those factors and decide upon which palette you'd like. And I hope this video helped clear up some of these differences so you can decide best which palette is going to work for you. If your palette isn't working for you, think about what you don't like about it. Think about some of the pros of these that I've talked about and figure out which one of those would kind of fix that problem. Is your palette really hard to clean? Maybe try something disposable like the paper or the disposable plates, or you can get a glass palette that's a lot easier to clean. So think about what's wrong with what you're painting with and then maybe try something different based on what I've talked about in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future videos and I'll see you again for another Mal Makes video.